Foreign news now to look at stories from Angola, Cyprus, and France. In Angola, between 500 and 1,000 people are feared to have died in three days of fighting in Rwanda, the capital, between rival liberation groups. Joint Portuguese and Liberation Army have chosen the breaking of the agitators who have been forced to trouble. The situation is now. The Loyalist Coalition, the three parties making up the Triple C, and led by the West Craig and Paisley, have swept the board, getting 46 seats. That's far better than even the most optimistic Loyalist leaders expected, and it gives them a clear, very good working majority of the over all the other parties. Valerie. We just want to talk, that's all. Valerie. Valerie.
Are you all right? I'll live. Come on, stand up. I know you. You're uh... No, I don't get down there much. Some sets a bit of a trek. Uh, neither do I. You know, my mother died about three years ago. Oh, I'm sorry. It's nice running into you like this. Oh, it was me that ran into you, remember? It's my fault. I was in a dream. I've got a few problems at the moment. Well, haven't we all? Well, you do. I don't seem to have anywhere to live at the moment. Come on, something will turn up. What's, uh, what's wrong with you? Oh, this guy I live with. You know, I was telling you about it. Things aren't going very well. Still, let's not talk about that. Well, I am supposed to be able to listen, you know. Not in the middle of the high street. But if you do need somebody to talk to, you know, it sounds like I'm trying to do a conversation job on you, doesn't it? <laughs> I do mean it, Jane. I know. Time for a drink. I'm not getting in that thing with you. Anyway, I'm a bit busy now. Oh. Okay. Give you a ring, yeah? Yes. Now I'll see if I can get a thing for you. You'll never guess who I met. I think you'd better go upstairs, Jenny. Yes, I will. I don't know. Bernard Cutler. Yeah, just now. Pride knocked me down. Vanessa, you won't believe this. He's become a priest. Isn't that incredible? He works in that church up by the library. Stranger things have happened. Oh, you're in a wonderful mood. Yeah, well, I've been trying to cope with your delightful boyfriend for the past half hour, that's why. Oh, dear. I think you had better go upstairs, Jenny. Could be trouble. Oh, Bernard said he might call in later. Did he? No, he didn't, actually. He said he'd definitely call in when I told him you were here, that is. Tell me why. Why do you always have to have a reason that I'm moving on, at all? It's time to go time. Well, if you get out of here now, you can stay out. Oh, well, that's up to you. Well, if it's up to me, you bastard, don't ever set foot in this flat again. Do you understand? Ever again. I told you, Jen. You are a right little charmer, aren't you? You're fucked. No, I haven't seen him. Thank you.
Excuse me. Excuse me. Do you know Father Cutler's here? Uh, no, sorry. Do you know who's taking confession? What? Who's taking confession? I, I don't know. I've never been here before. Nor have I. to make a confession or not? I'm listening. I'm sorry, Father. When did you last confess? I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't be here. Are you without sin? No, it, it's not that. It's, it's just that then I... Then you should be here. <laughs> no, I was... I was looking for someone. Are you being honest with yourself? I don't understand. One may look for another in a church, but not in a confessional. One enters only to unburden one's soul. Is that not correct? Yes. Then how are you troubled? Well, there's a man. A man I love, and he's left me. And I can't go on without him. I know I can't. Who is this man? I lived with him. And slept together? We slept together, yes. Why did you hesitate? Because, well, recently we hadn't. Well, I hadn't. Had intercourse? You see, he, he doesn't care about my feelings. He's, he's got other girls. And he doesn't even attempt to try and hide it. I mean, I could put up with it. I could put up with anything. If only... How long is it since you were last intimate? Oh, I don't know. Why is it important? Tell me. I want you to tell me. So, it really is true. I went to the labor exchange. It was the only job they had. <laughs> Thank you. No, no, I didn't mean that at all. No, as long as you're happy, that's the main thing. You are happy, aren't you? Yes, of course. I mean, there are things wrong with the church, but well, every job has its problems. Mm. Well, we can solve one of them right now. Come okay. here. Accommodation. Yes, well, wait a minute. What happens if this friend of yours doesn't want me to happen? Well, that's what we're going around to find out, isn't it? Okay. Uh, if he doesn't, you could always stay here. I mean, that's if it wouldn't upset anyone. Well, here? Well, I don't see why not. There was a guy living here. Uh, Did Jenny tell you? Her boyfriend. Her ex-boyfriend. He moved out this evening. So? Sounds like a good idea. 
Well, we'll just see, shall we? Bernard, I did tell you how nice it was to see you again, didn't I? Yes. You're holding something back. I don't want to say anything else. There's no need to be embarrassed about discussing sexual matters with me. I'm not embarrassed. Then tell me everything. I had an abortion a few months ago. He forced you. I shouldn't have come here. It was all a mistake. Don't go. I want to help you. I don't think you can. I, I, I'm sorry. You must let me try. Not now, Father. I'm late for an appointment. Please. Then tomorrow. Come and see me tomorrow. Not to confession, just to talk. Will you? I'll try. Together, we will seek God's help. Thank you, Father. What time will you come? Drink? Do you fancy some company? I only phone you when I need you, don't I? That's all right. Come on. I'm parked in somebody's driveway. Have I left them in the car? I'll have a look. Oh, bloody hell. I must have left them in the phone box. They're not here. Come on, we'll go back. Oh, what's the point? Somebody will have picked them up. Oh. We're not going to get in then, are we? We are. Nobody's looking. That's a bit dangerous, isn't it? Well... No, he gets them free from the business. Well, what does he do? He knows he does most of the time. Calls himself a record plugger. From well, what you say, he doesn't sound like much of a loss. No, but I love him. That's the trouble. Do you? No. I was trying to find someone to talk to tonight, and I went up to the church to look for an old friend, but he wasn't there. I felt so desperate that I went to confession. Isn't that stupid? I haven't done it since I was at school. Did it do any good? You must be joking. It made things ten times worse. Why? It was this priest. He was really strange. In what way? I must have left my cigarettes in that phone box. You don't smoke, do you? No, sorry. I'll go and get some. It'll only take a few minutes. I'll go if you like. No, it's all right. Oh, switch the thing off a bit, Perks, will you? Okay.
did you come from? How did you get in? You must be crazy. You've ruined it. What do you want? Chance in a million. Mm. No, don't throw it away. Why? Well, someone might want to examine it. What for? It blew up. In fact, a lot of use it is to Robert lying there in hospital. You shouldn't have let me move in tonight. You probably want to be alone. We wouldn't have known what to have done without you. Well, I haven't done anything. We both needed you here. Come on, Jen. Bed. No, I want to wait. The hospital might ring. They said there'd be no news tonight. Come on, there's nothing more we can do. Oh, I forgot to tell you something. After I found Robert, this door was unlocked. So? But it was locked before. I locked it myself. Hello? Yes? Speaking? Hospital. No, oh, did I? Good morning. Morning. Excuse my appearance. <sighs> that was the way that Terry used to wander around this house. You're positively overdressed. Please, I'm a man of the church. No one would think it to look at you now. It's funny, you look almost human. What are you doing? I'm baking my eggs after a fashion. I don't tell me you don't want me. Morning, love. Morning. Who was that on the phone? Oh, Father, someone or other. The one at your church, Bernard. Well, Mildred? Does he know I'm here? No. I left my keys there last night when I went to look for you. He found them. I'll fetch them for you tonight, if you like. No, it's all right. They're not there anymore. He's taken them home with him. To the presbytery.
Um, Father Meldrum is expecting me. Thank you. Would you mind waiting? Yes, of course. Can I help you? I'm sorry to have kept you. I can't stop, actually. Just step inside a moment. How are you feeling this morning? Very well, thank you. I'm glad you came back to see me. You did the right thing. I'm sorry. I think you're mistaking me for someone else. Um, my name's Jenny Welsh. You came to see me yesterday. Troubled. In need of help. And I am here to provide it. Oh, I see. Yes. Well, I'm... I'm sorry about that. I... I shouldn't have used you. Then why are you here? You said you have my keys. Are you afraid? Afraid of the man who defiled you? Don't be. He won't harm you again. I won't allow any man to do that. Think of the spiritual rewards we'll find, Jenny. Here. This man, he's corrupting you. Let me show you. Let me show you the way to true happiness. Um, I'm afraid I can't spare the time. I have to get back to the shop, you see. Um, if I could just have my keys. I have many pupils, you know. And I always quote them a line from the Book of Numbers, chapter 32. Be sure your sin will find you out. There's no need to be embarrassed about discussing sexual matters with me. I'm not embarrassed. Then tell me everything. I had an abortion a few months ago. He forced you. I should have come there. It was all a mistake. Don't go. You have no right. I have every right. I was put on this earth to combat sin. 
And I shall use every available means to do so. That's a... a breach of a basic Catholic ethic. Only if someone else hears it. So we must make sure that no one else does. What do you mean? We must make sure that your family don't find out about the unborn child you murdered. I don't believe this. Is it so hard to understand? A priest attempting to put his parishioners back on the path of righteousness. My key. You cannot survive without me! There's no need to be embarrassed about discussing sexual matters with me. I'm not embarrassed. Then tell me everything. I had an abortion. I didn't hear you knock. How strange. What do you want? I heard shouting. Really? Well, it was nothing that concerns you, Miss Rebberson. It was just a young person in need of guidance. Just one of the many. No, Father. This one was different, wasn't she? Is Bernard here? No, he... Uh, I'm not to take benediction or something, but... got to talk to somebody. That priest I went to see is insane. Mm. Okay, Jenny, but I... No, no, no. Listen to me. We've got to do something. We've got to find the church authorities or the police or... Jenny. It's Terry. He's back. He's here. I'm sorry. Oh, what have you got to be sorry about? I'm sorry. Oh, I lose my temper and I say things I don't mean. Forget it. Are you all right? Hey, Jenny. Something happened this evening. It upset me. What? You wouldn't be interested. Tell me. Have you nothing better to do? Not until 7.30, no. I'm taking benediction at St. Bartholomew's. Father Trafford is still ill, so I said that I... Very interesting. I fail to see how a service at 7.30 has anything to do with wasting time here at 6.30. But still... Well, as a matter of fact, I was reading about Franz de Vries. You remember the Belgian Cardinal? He is going to the Vatican Council meeting on Monday, determined to reintroduce his motion to abolish celibacy. I have little regard for the whims of renegade Belgian Cardinals, nor, I fancy, will the Sacred College. But it's an important issue, Father. It ought to be discussed. Well, don't you think that the need for celibacy, especially today, isn't all that relevant? Especially when one considers... Relevant to what? Relevant to increasing permissiveness in society, is that what you mean? There are those, Father Cutler, including yourself, no doubt, who would rip away the whole fabric of the Catholic Church if they had the opportunity. Our times change and we must change with them. By whose orders? Go about your business. Oh, uh, by the way, the Robertson funeral tomorrow. I'm well aware of the fact that the Robertson funeral is tomorrow. But it's been cancelled. They've decided to put him in the family crypt instead. So the grave will have to be filled in. I'll see to it. Well, if you give me the grave digger's number... I said I will see to it! Father! I'm coming. Go, go. Please don't be here when I return. Hug at the 
church authorities, I'm going round him myself. Well, what are you going to do? I'll sort him out. That won't get us anywhere. He gets that bloody tape, won't it? Hello? Hello, yeah, yeah, I want to speak to somebody called uh, Meldrum. Yeah, yeah, where's that? Yeah, okay, it's up. He's got some church, the uh, Sacred Heart. It's up by the library. Don't go too strong, will you, Terry, for God's sake? <laughs> Father Meldrum. Davey. Is there something I can do for you? Mrs. Davy. I don't recall the name, I'm sorry. You knew my daughter, Valerie Davy. Valerie? Oh, yes, of course. How is she? She's dead, Father. She threw herself out of a window. My poor woman. Don't pretend you're upset, because I know you're not. I know a lot about you, Father. I know that Valerie used to come and see you every night and that she'd come home in tears. I know you killed her. Mrs. Davy, I realise that you are distressed and that you must also be overwrought. Otherwise, you would not make such a foolish allegation. It's not foolish. It's the truth. I know it. I know everything. I see you. Then you must also know that your daughter was pregnant, that she came to me for help, and that she lived in mortal fear of your husband finding out. No. Oh, yes. I don't believe you. You won't be here. Mrs. Davy, I can assure you that I will be here. And we will discuss everything then. All right, then. Good. After Mass on Sunday. Yes. Now, do you care to leave? This way. Your name Meldrum? Yes. I want a word with you. A church matter? Yeah, that's right, a church matter. Perhaps you could leave it till the morning. What in the world? You're not very friendly, are you? If you wouldn't mind. You know Jenny Welsh? I asked you a question. Yes, I know Jenny Welsh. She tells me you've been upsetting her. Whatever passes between me and my parishioners is our business. It's my business as well, mate. Jenny happens to be a very good friend of mine. We live together and have no secrets. She told me about your tape recorder. 
Did you say you lived with Miss Welsh? Yeah, that's right. Last two years. Are you shocked, eh? The man who deserted her. The man who forced her to abort your child. You're changing the subject. That won't do, will it? So I'm here to nail you, mate. And I ain't leaving without that tape. Meldrum? Meldrum! The game's over, Meldrum. Says to you? What about Meldrum? Hmm. Well, nothing she says at the moment seems to make much sense, does it? No. She's getting all her troubles at once, poor kid. Well, it'll be weeks before she recovers from, you know, what happened in here. It isn't just that. It's her boyfriend mucking her around. He came back this afternoon. What? It was all tears and apologies, right? And now he's pissed off again. I mean, look at the time. She's sitting up there waiting for him. He's obviously not coming back. He's probably found some old slag in it. Honestly, Bernard, I could be slaughtered by it. Bernard! Fraser. Mitchell. Barrett. You are, my dear. Made with my own fair hands. Thank you. Bernard, I've been thinking. Hmm? If Terry doesn't come back tonight, we'll have to go and see Meldrum tomorrow. Well? We'll force him to give us the tape. Well, look, Jenny, there's no point in you going up there again. I'll mention it myself. It'll be all right. But he'll pretend he didn't do no, anything. No, leave it. I'll see to it. Well, when will you go? Tomorrow morning. First thing? Drink up. I think something's happened to Terry.
had almost given you up, Father. Mrs. Meldrum's dinner has been ready for hours. Why were you playing that record? I don't understand you, Father. I heard you playing the gramophone when I came in. I wouldn't have the first idea how to operate it. I'm not imagining things, Miss Brotherson. You should wipe your feet if you've been to the graveyard, Father. You've trailed mud into the house. Good evening, Mother. Have you had a pleasant day? I'm late, I know. Forgive me. Why does she use this machine? Against my express instructions. Why does she do it? I don't understand. Do you, Mother? Do you know why she does it? Mother, I need your help so badly. Do you remember when I used to come to you with all my problems? Big or small, you always knew what to do. I wouldn't be a member of the church now if it hadn't been for you. You guided me away from temptation and into God's service. I'll always be grateful. But I need your help again, Mother. The old temptations. They've returned. They've been growing for some time. I don't understand it. I guide and advise young people all the time. Some of them attractive young girls. They come here. They still do. But I've never... I've ne never, well, not really wanted to. I've never wanted anything more. Until now. She reminds me of her. The voice, the first time I heard it. The manner, everything. I want her. Is it wrong? Of course it's wrong, but I can't control it. I thought he was her lover. He used her despicably. But I punished the wrong man. I've atoned for that now, though. Oh, yes. The real culprit has been brought to book. Perhaps she'll come to me now. Now she's alone. Perhaps she'll need me. How dare she meddle with this instrument? It's not hers. It's ours. This is our music, isn't it, Mother?
Mother is ready for bed, Miss Brabazon. Thank you, Father. I'm going for a walk to clear my head. gone out, I'm afraid. You're all alone again with me. Everything all right, miss? I'm sorry. Yes, everything's all right. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I realize that. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm finding this very embarrassing. As well you might. You come here with these absurd accusations. Uh, her accusations. You evidently gave them credence. Well, I wanted to please her. Exactly. She needs to be pacified. She is a disturbed girl who is still in what I believe is termed a state of shock. She came to me of her own volition and I tried to help her. What more is there to be said? Well, she said you recorded her confession and played it back. And this young man is responding well to my counsel. I'm most interested in the case of a young woman who came to see me this evening. I shall call her Miss A. She was reluctant to talk and even went so far as to pretend that she had come to church for a reason other than to confess. 
It was some little time before she felt at ease with me, and it was only then that I realised how much she needed help. Her frustrations are partly sexual, I suppose, but I think they go deeper than that. I must discover why she depends so heavily on a man who clearly has little regard for her. At our next meeting, I shall suggest new companions, new interests. Cutler's Youth Club may well be a start. I record salient facts about the young people who come to me. It helps me study their cases. Miss Welsh learned of this and insisted on hearing what I had said about her. If I had known how she'd distort my intentions, I'd never have considered it. Well, she needs help, that's true. As do the patients of St Andrew's Hospital. I'm already late for my rounds. He's still very weak indeed. You'll only be able to stay a few moments. Can he talk? He hasn't said anything yet. Lark, isn't it? What is it? Well, first it's on, then it's off, then it's on again. They want to make up their bleeding minds, don't they? Oh, the Robertson funeral. Yes, it was cancelled. Father Meldrum probably filled in the grave. Probably wanted to save you the trouble. Cancelled? Yesterday. Well, who's in there, then? <laughs> Nobody. It's empty. Come off it. What do you mean? Look at all this. You can't put in more earth than you take out, can you? Oh, Father. There's a mind. And if there's a man, there's got to be something inside, hasn't there? What is it? I don't understand. Tell me. I know, I know. I love you too. Poor Bobby. I did it for you. <gasps> Do I repel you? You mustn't shy away from me. Not after what I've done for you. I was right to punish this man. To destroy the face that charmed and lured you? Don't waste your pity on a common wastrel. Let him languish and repent his sins. You were meant for something better. Help me! Help me! Somebody! Help me! You'll find no other idea. Or anywhere. In time, you will come to realize that. Right, just calm yourself. No, you don't understand. You don't understand. Get the police, for God's sake, get the police. It's just a little bit. You tried to kill Bob, but that patient. Mr. Girl. Yes, sir. Come on, Miss Girl, just wait. What are you doing? Just a sedative. My head feels funny. It will do. Don't worry. I'll just finish this and I'm going to see you home. The priest? He's gone. Gone? I don't know why you took such a dislike to him. He's very concerned about you. Oh. He told us what you've been through. Don't feel embarrassed.
Closing for lunch. No, it's so cold. I've got about 50 crates to unpack before two o'clock. I'll help. I was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> Shit! <laughs> I beg your pardon. It's not that funny. Look. Oh. I thought you were joking when you said 50. No, this is the last one. There you go. Oh, that's nice. There should be a very lovely... Ah, here it is. I'd rather walk the rest of the way. I need the fresh air. Okay. Thank you very much. We're neighbours. I live just over there. If you have any more problems, you give me a ring. Or you can always get me to the hospital. Thank you. Welsh, isn't it? Yes. I thought so. I've been following you, you see. I didn't want to speak until I was sure of everything. I'm sorry. You want to know who I am and everything. You don't know me, but, well, we've got the same interests, you might say. What? Father Meldrum. What about him? I had a daughter. A bit younger than you, she was. And he killed her. They said it was suicide. But he killed her just as sure as if he'd pushed her out of that window himself. My husband says I'm mad saying things like that. You better come with me. What for? We're going to the police. You think I haven't been? It's no good. They won't listen. He's a priest, you see. And he's been too clever. I'm the clever one now. I've seen the body. Body? We can't go now, but you come to church after Mass on Sunday. I'm seeing him then. Yes? I'll show you. I've got an idea. Sunday? It was Father Meldrum who alerted us. And of course, we're very glad he did. I'm pretty sure we can put the delusions down to strain. And I see no reason why these shouldn't pass within, well, a couple of weeks at the most. But, in the meantime, your sister will have to be cared for very carefully indeed. Yes. Thank you, Doctor. Goodbye, Miss Wilkins. Goodbye. Did you get a word? Most of it. But you're sorry you moved in with us now, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> Careful. Oh, okay, she is talk of the devil. Hi, Jim. We've been plotting things in your absence. I hope you don't mind. We were wondering if you'd like a holiday. We haven't had one for a couple of years, have you? You'd go down to the country, go to Somerset, see Mum. Well, I mean, you can go anywhere else you like, but there would be a few conditions. Did you see Father Meldrum? And one of them is that this subject of Father Meldrum is dropped. Did you? Yes, Jenny, I did. Well, did you get the tape? No. Why? There was nothing on that tape, Jenny. It was just his personal memory. I knew it! The... Now listen. I knew Jenny, this would listen. happen. And stop patronising me. Would you like to go to the country? In a sanatorium, I suppose? Now, don't be silly. All right, Vanessa. I won't be silly. I won't mention Father Meldrum again because I, I don't have to. Because I found someone who does believe me. And just wait and let's see what happens when Robert gets better, shall we? 
because that'll put a different complexion on things. Jenny, oh, no, we've got to tell her. What is it? What's the matter? Robert's dead. He's not. No, he's not. Robert's not dead. No! No, he's not dead. Jenny. No, leave me. Jenny, no, Jenny, he's not dead. <laughs> You missed it. You told me, Vanessa. Why won't you tell? Just try and rest. Why won't you believe me? Why won't you believe me? <laughs> None of us is without sin, be sure of that. And if you have looked into yourself and found none, look further. Look to your children. Are they pure? Are they blameless? If they are not, it is you who are to blame. You taught them what they know. Why do you throw up your arms when your children lie and steal, become sexually adventurous? and bring unwanted babies into the world. It is the parent who is responsible for his child's misbehavior. What a new wealth of meaning, therefore, is expressed in our Lord's pertinent question. Why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? I think you've looked out of that window long enough. People will begin to think that we're harboring a geriatric spy. <laughs> you don't expect a hot breakfast every morning, do you? Yesterday was an exception, I can assure you. Your son was hanging around the kitchen. I had to put on some kind of performance. Now, come on. If you don't drink this properly, you'll get nothing else for the rest of the day. I mean it. <laughs> All right, Mrs. Meldrum. Two can play at that game. You don't cooperate with me. I don't cooperate with you. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christo Custodiat Animan Tuam Vitam Eternum Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christo Custodiat Animan Tuam Vitam Eternum Amen.
Corpus Domini Nostrum Jesu Christo Custodiat Animam Tuam in Vitam Eternam. Amen. Corpus Domini Nostrum Jesu Christo Custodiat Animam Tuam in Vitam Eternam. Amen. Corpus Domini Nostrum Jesu Christo Custodiat Animam Tuam in Vitam Eternam. Was there any history of heart trouble? I wouldn't know. Oh, I'll have a word with the husband now. Where is he? Outside? Yes. Was it a heart attack? Yes. Out like a light. as soon as possible. Of course. And see she doesn't get out of bed. Not that it's likely. I sedated her very heavily. I'm uh, sorry I've got a rush. I should have been to the hospital five minutes ago. Well, thank you very much for coming so quickly, Doctor. Well, at all, it's a most unusual case. Sometimes you feel almost inclined to believe her, don't you? You have to keep reminding yourself that all her ideas about Father Meldrum and some kind of avenging angel are quite fantastic. But why should she pick a Roman Catholic priest of all people? It's difficult to say. She obviously feels responsible for Robert's death and her boyfriend walking out on her. So perhaps when she went to Meldrum for help, and when she didn't get it, she transferred the guilt she felt onto him. I see. I'm sorry, I must go. Um, I'll look in on you tomorrow. Why did she think she knew that woman this morning? Perhaps she did. You remember she... she said she'd found someone who believed her. Well, we'll never know now. I'll go and get this medicine. Vanessa, I've made my decision. I'll do it tonight. <laughs> Is something the matter, Miss Brabazon? Oh, if you feel incapable of carrying out your duties, you must tell me. I want someone who can cope, not hinder. I have enough to do as it is. A church to run, pupils to see. I've been neglecting them. Her jaws can't take this food, Father. I've told you before, there's no point in bringing her down here every Sunday. If you cannot look after my mother in the manner to which she is accustomed, Miss Brabazon, I shall have to find someone who can. No one is indispensable, are they, Mother? Or are they? Is she indispensable? The girl? Perhaps I should find out. Yes. 
I shall find out. Seven four four zero. Miss Welsh. Speaking. This is Father Meldrum. I want to remind you of your obligations to me. I call them obligations, you see, because you have no alternative but to honour them. Embarrassed about discussing sexual matters with me? I'm not embarrassed. Then tell me everything. I had an abortion. Are you going to come and see me, Jenny? Or am I going to have to play this tape to somebody else? Jenny? I don't know how to say this. We've got to talk. Now. I can't see the reason for your concern, Bernie. You've made a decision and you've made the right one. Ironically enough, you're just the man the church needs. Do you mean that? Bernard, I've never been able to understand why the Catholic Church looks upon itself as a kind of prison with those in its service doing life sentences. Just because a man can't live by its code doesn't mean to say that he can't further the religion in another occupation. Uh, some would call it cowardice. They might at that. I call it honesty. If you stayed on, you'd be a hypocrite and weave enough of those as it is. I'm glad I came to see you, Father. No, I hope you didn't come just so I could salve your conscience. Oh, no. No, you'll have no need to have one anyway. Have you uh, written your resignation? Well, I thought I might do it tonight at the church. Or should I do it, Father? Should I? Yes. Act now, Bernard. Maybe next year or the year after, who knows? Our church could become enlightened. Then we may see you again. Thank you, Father. God bless you. We ain't here, but you'll be here in about an hour. Oh, I can't wait that long. Um, look, when you see Father Cutler, would you tell him that Vanessa called? Yes. And that she's gone to the presbytery to get the tape. The tape, yes. No, but he'll understand. Thank you. Is there anything I can do, Father? I'm expecting someone. If she should call, tell her to wait. It's going to rain, Father. You'll need an umbrella. Rain, yes. Cleansing rain.
to leave you up here to fend for yourself. You're obviously not as helpless as you make out. What are you doing in my house? I don't think Mrs. Meldrum will survive a shock like this, Father. Do you? She's growing very weak. I think you ought to administer the last rites.
they got to absolve him of the part of the filly with split a sanctity on him. suffering and extend his saving grace to you. Freed from all the power of sin. I'm afraid. Aren't you? Not alone, Saviour. I'm here. I've always been here. Why? Why have you stayed? I jilted you 30 years ago. Why did you stay? You know the answer to that. No, not after all this time. Love, Saviour. Love and understanding. I have things to do, my, my sermon for tomorrow. You didn't leave me, Xavier. You were afraid. You went to your mother for help and she engineered you into the church. I mean, that's what happened. She was to blame. She was afraid of losing you. No. But I understand. I know why people want to escape from the world. Look at me. <laughs> I was the girl they all stared at. The one with the funny eye. What a shame, poor girl. She had an operation that went wrong. No, you mustn't do this. I won't allow it. I'm doing it for you, Xavier. I want you to know that you're not alone. I've always been here. I followed you into the church because I was happy to share your house, even though I couldn't share your bed. But I've understood the self-doubt, the grief, the longings. Face the fact, Saviour. Face up to reality. I have. I know why I fell in love with Jenny Welsh. I've known all along. She looks like you 30 years ago. I wanted you then. But Mother said no. Mother knew best. I had no choice. It, it's... It's not too late. Not too late. We've wasted our lives. Not wasted, Xavier. Not all of it. Can't you remember when we were together in the country in the summer, listening to our music? The music I still can't live without. It can be like that again. No, not now. There's one way, Xavier. One way we can be together again for always. 
wait for me. loved me for 30 years and I never knew never knew what she was prepared to do for me this is surely a dream Cutler we're dreaming aren't we you and I you've been upstairs how and why her mind snapped when I don't know a week ago, a year ago, 30 years ago. She wanted me for herself. I'd sense she was becoming jealous of anyone who depended on me. But this... She's murdered my mother, Cutler. And there's another woman up there. I've never seen her before. Vanessa. Vanessa. Vanessa Welch. She was coming to see me tonight. She telephoned. She was worried about her sister. Oh, the poor girl. How did she... I came in here to telephone the police, and I found her like that. Why did she never confess to me? Why did she suffer alone? At the church, there's another body. Oh, dear God, no. In the graveyard. A young man, middle twenties, blonde. Wyatt. Teddy Wyatt. Oh, why him? A hot-blooded young man, he challenged me on my handling of his fiancée, Jenny Welsh. I explained in the best possible way. She must have overheard thought she was protecting me. What have you done with him? He was in a grave. I covered him up. Covered him up? Yes, that is what we must both do. This tragic woman's actions must not reflect through us to the church. 
We must cover up our involvement with a minimum of scandal. I am already involved. But there's no need for you. I was going to resign from the church tonight to be with Vanessa. She was all I wanted. I was... I was going to ask her to marry me. But then, if she was all you wanted, there's no longer reason for you to leave the church. Yes, this hurts, I know. But I must show you the reality you are too distraught to recognize. Have you seen the bishop? It is as if you had never been here. The Lord will forgive us for preserving the honor of his church. Go. Time will heal, I promise you. But I... I shall telephone the police and tell them what I found when I arrived home. I shall not involve you or the good name of Miss Welsh. Yes, sir. 